Hello and welcome back to State of Charge. I'm here today in Newark, California at Lucid Motor Headquarters about to take that beautiful Lucid Air Dream Edition behind me over to an Electrify America DC fast charger and record the first zero to 100% DC fast charging session on a Lucid Air. That's right. I have been given the honor of doing the very first zero to 100% DC fast charging session on a Lucid Air. We're gonna see what the peak charging rate is, how the charging curve ends up, because as you know, the charging curve is probably even more important than the peak charging rate. Now Lucid claims this is the fastest charging electric vehicle in North America today. So we're gonna put it to the test and see exactly how fast this guy charges. Now you have to understand, we could be limited by the equipment because the charging process is only as good as the charging equipment. And we've had issues with some of the infrastructure that's out there already. So let's head over now. We're gonna to go to the Electrify America DC fast charging station. We're gonna plug her in. We're gonna see if plug-in charge works. And then we're gonna see just how fast this bad boy charges. We'll check back in when I'm on the way and we'll talk about some of the things we did to make sure this charging session goes off successfully. So in order to get the best charging rate we can, we have to make sure the battery is at the right temperature. Lucid tells me that that needs to be at around 31 degrees Celsius, which is about 88 degrees Fahrenheit or higher in order to get peak charging performance. To do that, you want to precondition the battery. You hit charging here. You'll see this comes up, start preconditioning. Now it's going to ask you to confirm and it tells you that preconditioning shortens your charging time. You, they want you to start 20 minutes before fast charging. Now that depends on how cold the battery is. If it's really cold, you might want to start as much as 45 minutes before fast charging. If you want to get the peak charging rate. Now you don't have to do this. You can just plug into a DC fast charger. You don't need to precondition. You just do that to get the fastest and the highest charging rate possible. And it tells you that it's going to uh, reduce your remaining range because some of the energy is now being used to warm the battery. It's not being used to propel the car. And it reminds you, you can still plug in while preconditioning. When you roll up to the station, you don't have to shut off preconditioning. You can just plug in. And now it wants you to confirm. So we're going to confirm that. And now it says stop preconditioning because the battery is preconditioning. Um, I want to point out that I turned it off just to do this demonstration. I've been preconditioning for like a half an hour now just to make sure we are definitely at the right battery temperature. Lucid has told me that we will arrive at the Electrify America charging station at the proper temperature and the car will be able to accept its maximum power. So I have to go along with what they told me. I'm also going to drive it relatively aggressively on the way over there. So we'll warm things up even a little further. All right, let's head over to the Electrify America charging station and begin this DC fast charge test. One more thing I'd like to point out, you see down here it says set charge limit. When you press that, you'll see I have it set to charge at 100%. If you'd like to charge to a lower state of charge for daily charging, you'd simply take this ball and slide it down to wherever you would like. The daily uh, icon there is set at about 80%, but again, you can charge to whatever percentage you want on daily charging. With how long of range this car has, I don't really see the need in charging it for higher than 80% because it goes so far per charge. I think that's probably a good recommendation on Lucid's part. 80% is just fine on a car that goes 500 miles per charge. All right. So I am on my way to the Electrify America charging station in Santa Clara. It's called the Westfield Valley Fair Electrify America charging station. And it actually, it's a new one that just came online and it has 14 stations, two of which are 350 kilowatts. So we have to get one of those two stations. And it was, we just reported on this on Inside EVs. It was the 200th Electrify America charging station in California. So they hit a nice milestone out here. I hope that everything goes off without a hitch. I've been so excited about doing this car, the DC fast charging test on the Lucid Air for so long now because it has so much promise and Lucid's been saying it's the fastest charging electric vehicle. This thing can take in over 300 kilowatts. I don't know 
that the charging stations can deliver that much. I know Electrify America has 350 kilowatt DC fast charging stations, but I'm still not convinced that they'll deliver that much power because there's been no vehicles that could accept that much power. Up until now, the Taycan could accept the most power, which was 270 kilowatts. And, uh, you know, without vehicles on the road testing and using them, I'm uh, not really sure that the, the stations can actually deliver that much, but we'll find out really soon. The Lucid Air just won Motor Trends Car of the Year Award. It's got the longest range, fastest charging. Lucid said it's the most advanced electric vehicle. We're not going to be testing all that stuff out today, but we will be testing its charging to see if it's the fastest charging EV, and we'll compare it to some of the other electric vehicles that charge really quickly, like Tesla Model S, uh, Taycan, which I just did the charging recordings on those, both of those vehicles. So we'll have them to compare. Um, I tell you, the Air is a great driving vehicle. This feels so good. It's so responsive, so comfortable. The interior is beautiful. It's, I can see why Motor Trend selected it to be the car of the year. Talking about Lucid, I have to commend them. They've been excellent with this whole process of letting me be the first person do this full DC fast charging test. And they didn't want to interfere. They said, we want you to do it the way you do it. Uh, tell us what you need. Uh, we don't want to do anything outside of that. We're not going to influence anything. Um, I actually even said maybe we should do it at the DC fast charging station in your labs because we know that is going to work properly because, you know, every now and then I'll do a DC fast charge test. I'll plug into a charging station out in the wild and I don't get what I need or the car shuts off. I mean, we've all, if you own an electric vehicle and you've used public infrastructure, you know that happens from time to time. And I didn't want to fly all the way out here to California, set this whole thing up and plug in and then womp womp. So I said, well, maybe we'll do it at your facility. And they said, no, we don't want you to do it at our facility. We don't want it to look contrived. We don't want it to look like we set it up to charge the great. They said, we'll give you the car, you go do your thing, we're not going to interfere. The only thing that they did do was they did communicate with Electrify America to make sure the charging station that I'm going to has been functioning lately. Now, that's the best you can do. We, we can't be certain that when I plug in today, it's going to work, but you can do some background on the station to make sure that other people haven't had issues. And supposedly this 350 kilowatt charging station that I'm going to plug into has been reliable lately. Now, it hasn't been reliable in the 300 kilowatt area because there's no other cars out there that can charge at that rate, but it has been reliable. So we got our fingers crossed that we're going to get a clean zero to 100% charging session without any issues. We have arrived at Westfield Valley Fair in Santa Clara, and we are about to plug in the Lucid Air for our DC fast charge test. Now, this is a really cool charging station here at the Westfield Valley Fair. Electrify America did a great job. It's got 14 stations. Two of them are 350 kilowatt. The rest of them are 150. And the stalls have the power painted on the ground that the station in that slot can deliver. I've never seen that before. It's really cool, makes it easy because other than that, you have to look at the little stickers on the charging station if you don't go into your Electrify America app ahead of time to see which stalls deliver which power. So I think this is really cool that it shows it on the ground. There's also solar canopies here, which are also awesome, uh, but you have to understand, it's not like they're fully powering these charging stations, not by a long shot. But what they do do is trickle feed a uh, on-site energy storage. This is one of the Electrify America sites that has battery storage here, which helps them lower the cost of charging because they can charge up the batteries overnight when electricity rates cost less and then deploy it during the day and also feed off the grid during the day, but at a lower rate so they don't incur enormous demand charges, which are a big problem with DC fast charging. All right, the time has come. We're going to plug in, hopefully plug in charge works because the Lucid Air does come with plug in charge. We're going to check out, make sure that works. Then we're going to record the whole session. And as always, we're going to analyze the heck out of it, make some graphs and some charts, compare it to other electric vehicles. All that's coming up next. But please don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. All right, the time has come. We're going to plug in the Lucid Air Dream Edition range, 520 mile EPA rated range. 
super high speed DC fast charging, but we're gonna find out right now exactly how fast that is. This vehicle is equipped with plug-in charge, so I should be able to just plug it in and it's gonna authenticate and start charging. Let's give it a go. It's connecting to vehicle. Payment accepted. Looks like we're charging. Initiating charging and we're on our way. Stay tuned because we're gonna be showing the entire charging session now in time lapse before we go over the whole thing with our charts and graphs and analyze it. Lucid Air, first DC fast charge recording by a third party. Tom Alagany, state of charge. Thanks for watching. As soon as we plug in, bang, 271 kilowatt. But I'm stopping the video here to show you what's on the screen here. You see where it says 81 minutes left until 80%? That's new software. I've never seen that on Electrify America charging stations. I'm used to just seeing the state of charge. But now the state of charge rotates with what the station believes is the time it's going to take to reach 80% state of charge which in the case of the Lucid Air was completely incorrect. So I want to tell everybody just totally disregard that metric there that you see um, where it shows how long it's going to take to get to 80% because it's completely wrong. Just pay attention to the state of charge and ignore that time to 80%. We hit the magical 300 kilowatt point in only one and a half minutes and the 10% state of charge point in three minutes and five and a half minutes. We're at 20% state of charge and we've now added 100 miles of range based on a slightly derated EPA range rating and in only 11 minutes of charging, we've added 50 kilowatt hours. Now I stopped the video at this point to talk about this a little bit. That's actually half the size of a Tesla Model S battery pack. And the Model S, when I supercharged it, it took 15 minutes to add 50 kilowatt hours. And the Porsche Taycan took me 23 minutes to add 50 kilowatt hours. And you have to also consider that the air is more efficient than both of those vehicles. So not only did you add 50 kilowatt hours in less time, but the air can go further than those two electric vehicles can on 50 kilowatt hour. So let's start the video back up now and continue the observation. We hit the 40% state of charge point in 12 minutes and we've now added back 200 miles of driving range in only 12 minutes. We're at 50% state of charge in 16 minutes and we've now taken in 67 kilowatt hours. Now I'm gonna stop the video here to talk about that for a minute. The Lucid Air Dream Edition range has a 118 kilowatt hour battery pack usable. Lucid told me that is extremely close to the total size of the battery pack. Because the battery pack is so large, Lucid is recommending that their customers charge to only 80%. And in doing so, they're opening up nearly the entire battery pack as usable. So with a 118 kilowatt hour battery pack, you'd say, wow, I wouldn't think that you'd be in 67 kilowatt hour dispensed at 50% state of charge. That's 134 kilowatt hour, what gives? Well, there's always charging losses when you DC fast charge. And the faster you charge, the higher amount of power, the more losses because of heat. So we would expect somewhere around a 10% uh, loss when we're charging at these high rates of 300 and 200 kilowatt hour. So we would expect to finish up with the amount of energy dispensed being somewhere about 10% more than what the battery pack size is. So let's see what happens when we're done and let's start the video back up now. After 20 minutes of charging, we're at 56% state of charge and the station has delivered 76 kilowatt hour. The charge rate has also dropped below 150 kilowatt for the first time. Two minutes later, we're at 60% state of charge and we've now added 300 miles of driving range. 70% state of charge arrives in 28 minutes and the station has dispensed 94 kilowatt hour. We're now also charging at 110 kilowatt. 
in 32 minutes, we're at 75% state of charge, and the station has dispensed 100 kilowatt hour. As mentioned before, 100 kilowatt hour has not made it into the battery pack. Probably only about 89 to 90 kilowatt hour has, with the rest being lost to heat and also to power the cooling system of the air as it was working furiously to keep the batteries and components cool during this charging session. 75% is also when the charge rate slips below 100 kilowatt for good. The air reaches 80% state of charge in 37 minutes, and we've now added back 400 miles of driving range in only 37 minutes, and we're charging at 83 kilowatt. Now, as a comparison, when I did my Tesla Model S Plaid supercharging recording, at 80%, the Plaid was taking in 70 kilowatt. And when I did my Porsche Taycan DC fast charge test, at 80%, it was charging at 54 kilowatt. The air reaches 90% state of charge in 49 minutes, and at that point, it's only pulling about 50 kilowatt. Now, most people would unplug by now, or even earlier, maybe at 85%, but we're doing this 0 to 100% to give people a complete picture of the charging curve. But if you are charging an electric vehicle, an air or any electric vehicle, you really shouldn't be hanging out at a DC fast charger beyond 80 or 85%. It's a waste of time because the cars then charge so much lower than they do at a lower state of charge. Even the air with such its great DC fast charging capability slows down dramatically at higher states of charge. If you remember, we got to 80% state of charge in 37 minutes, and then it takes another 45 minutes to go from 80% to 100%. So you do the math. It's just not worth hanging out once the state of charge gets above 80% with any electric vehicle, unless you absolutely have to. The station finally shuts off in an hour and 22 minutes, and we've added 134 kilowatt hour. That's slightly more than I was expecting. I was figured we were going to finish up with 130 kilowatt hour dispensed, because that'd be 10% charging losses on top of the Air's 118 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it could be a couple of things. Lucid might have an extra kilowatt hour or two in there that they're not telling us about, or the fact that we were charging at such a high rate, over 300 kilowatt, and the high 200 kilowatts for a long time meant that we had more charging losses than what I experienced with most of the other electric vehicles that I charge. In any event, we finished up the zero to 100% charging session in an hour and 22 minutes, and the station had dispensed 134 kilowatt hours. All right, well, there we have it. The very first zero to 100% DC fast charge recording of a Lucid Air. And there's a lot to unpack here. First off, it hit 304 kilowatts. First time we've seen an EV hit over 300 kilowatts. Now it didn't hold that for very long, it was only for a couple of minutes at the very beginning of the charging session, but that's okay because it held a very high charging rate for a long time. And as you can see, it added kilowatt hour to the battery pack really quickly. In only five minutes, it added 100 miles of range. Now that's EPA rated range. And let me explain, the Lucid Air Dream Edition range that I charged has an EPA range rating of 520 miles. Now, we always like to do 70 mile an hour highway range tests, and that's what I use as the official range for the cars. When I talk about how many miles per minute they add and how long it took to add 100 miles or 200 miles of range to an EV, I use that rather than the EPA uh, official range. That's what we do and we like to be consistent on all the cars we test here. But we haven't had a chance to range test the Lucid Air. I'm going to be doing that very soon. We're going to be setting up a 70 mile an hour highway range test within a matter of a couple of weeks. And I'll then be able to revisit this and really add how many, how long it took to add 100 miles, 200 miles, 300 miles of range. But for now today, what I'm going to do is since it's EPA range rated at 520 miles, I'm going to knock 20 miles off of that. And I'm going to say the car has a 500 mile range. And I know this is an estimate and a guess. It makes things simple because when we hit 20% state of charge, we've added 100 miles of range. 40% is 200, so forth and so on. And it's going to make it easier to really convert the time to the miles added. Now, as I said, we're going to come back and revisit that once I do the 70 mile an hour highway range test. But for the purposes of today, we don't have any official range testing. We're going to use EPA. In five and a half minutes, 
the air added 100 miles of range if you use 500 miles as the range of the vehicle. It took 12 minutes to add 200 miles. <laughs> and in, in only 22 minutes, it added 300 miles of range. As a matter of fact, it charged from zero to 80% in only 37 minutes. And that's pretty amazing when you consider it has such a large battery pack. You know, when we talk about 20 to 80% and so forth, you really can't compare EV to EV uh, unless you compare the battery pack size and the range, because that's really what's most important is how far do you get? Customers uh, really don't care about uh, C rates and, and battery percentages, or even how many kilowatt hours are added to the car in a certain period of time. What most people really care about is how long do I have to charge to add 100 miles or 200 miles or 300 miles of range when you're stopped at a DC fast charger. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today. How long it took to add a certain amount of miles. I set up a couple of charts, which we're gonna dive into right now. We're gonna pick this stuff apart and hopefully make sense out of what just happened here. But I think when all is said and done, it's gonna be pretty clear that the air is the fastest charging electric vehicle available today. All right, so first up, let's take a look at the charging power chart. As you can see, as soon as we plugged in, the air jumped up to about 270 kilowatt charge rate. And then it creeps up to 300 kilowatt. It was a little bit above 300 kilowatt. We saw a 303, then 304 for just a minute or so. And it holds around 300 kilowatts. It bounced up and down a little bit till about the 16% state of charge point. And that's when it begins this long, nearly perfectly linear slope all the way down to 100% state of charge. Now, the interesting thing is, I talked to Lucid about this. I talked to him about the charging curve when we were done and said, you know, I, I kind of wish it was a little bit more linear that it, it held a, a higher charging rate for a longer period of time. And they explained to me that they could have made it almost a perfect straight line up to about 80% if they would have reduced the initial charge rate. And quite honestly, the vehicle would have taken the same amount of time to charge because even though you get all this power in the beginning, you have to start ramping down pretty rapidly as you see there because things get hot and some components can overheat. So you get this really huge burst of power in the beginning, but then it starts to slope all the way down. Now, if they would have done it differently, and let's say, had a maximum charge rate of 230 or 240 kilowatts, they could have had the car jump right up to that and then held that charge rate all the way up to 70 to 80% before it started tapering down to 100%. And they had internal discussion on this. What should we do? What would be better? And the, uh, the higher charging rate won. I think it's probably part of that is to say that we're the first electric vehicle that can charge at rates over 300 kilowatt. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be slower now. It just means that the chart looks like this as opposed to what it would have looked like if they would have capped the maximum charging rate at around 250 kilowatts, maybe a little bit less than that. It would have been virtually a straight line, kind of like the Audi e-tron. The Audi e-tron has 150 kilowatt DC fast charge rate. And when you plug in, it jumps right up to it and it holds it. It's like a perfectly straight line up over 70%. And a lot of people like that. It's You know exactly what you're gonna get the whole time. And with the air, it's a little bit different. You get a ton of power up front, then it starts to slope down to the end. A couple of key points to note is at the 43% state of charges, when the air drops down below the 200 kilowatt charge rate, and then at 74%, it drops down below 100 kilowatt. Now, a lot of people like to talk about how long does it take to charge from 20 to 80% in an electric vehicle. I said earlier that nobody charges from zero to 100%, and there's no one set starting point and ending point, but people use the 20 to 80% reference because that's probably an average uh, charging session where somebody might use on a road trip. They wouldn't probably drive too much lower than 20%. People feel uncomfortable getting to a low percent state of charge. So 20% is a good starting point. So let's say you were going to charge the air from 20% to 80%. During this charging session, it took 31 and a half minutes and you added 
300 miles of EPA rated range. That's 60% of the battery. And as we said earlier, every 20% is about 100 miles of range. So if you charge from 20% to 80%, it's going to take you about 31 and a half minutes and you'll add about 300 miles of range. However, it might even be quicker because Lucid told me if you plugged in at 20%, you'd see better performance in the beginning of the charging curve than you see here. That's because at this point, the car was starting to throttle down the charging rate to cool things down. We had just charged at over 300 kilowatts for a while and the vehicle needed to cool things down so it lowered the charge rate. If you just plugged in at 20%, you'd see better performance for the first 10 or 15 minutes than what you see on this charging curve. So you may do 20 to 80% in 28 or 29 minutes. Either way, it's going to be pretty close to this. Figure on about a half an hour to get from 20% to 80% and add 300 miles of range in a Lucid Air. Next up is the time to charge graph. And as you can see, the x-axis down on the bottom has the charge time in minutes. The y-axis is the state of charge of the vehicle. You can see here in the beginning of the charging session, the curve goes up a lot more aggressively than it does once we get past, say, the 20 minute point. Now let's take a quick look at how fast we added 100, 200, 300, and 400 miles of range. The 100 miles of range added happened in five and a half minutes. 200 miles came at the 12 minute point. 300 miles of added range comes in 22 minutes and 400 miles of range in only 37 minutes. That's really crazy fast. 400 miles is more range than any electric vehicle sold today other than the Lucid Air and the Tesla Model S long range can even do. And the Air can add it in a little more than a half an hour, making it just an incredible long range car that's just fantastic for road tripping or even say a cannonball run record maybe really wouldn't surprise me if the next time we see the cannonball run record for electric vehicles done in a lucid air well that's a wrap on the lucid air dc fast charge zero to 100 percent recording uh, as i've said before in the video i just want to make it really clear that nobody is really going to be charging a vehicle zero to 100 percent that's just not what happens in the real world but we do this so we get a complete picture of what it would take to charge from zero to 100 percent and then people can pick exactly what they'd like to see well how long did it take from 10 to 70 or from 20 to 50 so forth and so on that's why we make the charts and graphs too people can print those up if they'd like and they get a good idea of exactly from what starting port and what finishing port how long it takes and how much miles are added in that time period. Next up, we're gonna be doing a deep dive analysis comparing the Lucid Air charging to the Tesla Model S Plaid and Porsche Taycan, both of which I recorded zero to 100% within the last month. So I've got fresh data on cars that were practically new. All three of these cars that I tested had less than a couple thousand miles on them, so the batteries were fresh, the cars were new, none of them really experienced much degradation, so it should be a really fair analysis. I hope to have that video up within a week or so, uh, but it's, there's a lot of data that I wanna crunch, a lot of charts I wanna make, so it might take a little bit longer than that. But look forward to that video coming up next here on State of Charge. Thanks for watching today. If you like what we're doing here, don't forget, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thanks for watching.